This is Mixbox from IK Multimedia. I'm a bit late coming to the party uh, over this product. Um, I was dealing with all the COVID fallout over the end of last year and into the new year, so I missed the release of this. But I've got it now, and here it is. Uh, and as you can see, Mixbox is an API 500 lunchbox style rack, and it comes with 71 individual effects and processors. It can work as a plugin in your door, but when you install it, it also installs a standalone version which can be used independently of any door for things like live performance. It retails at 299 euros, and to my mind, it is the best value collection of plugins you can now get from any manufacturer. Okay, so Mixbox, let's quickly listen to it. Um, I have got a drum beat and a bass line here and they've both got a mix box strapped over their output. This is the mix box on the drum channel final output and this is the mix box on the bass channel output. Now let's turn them both off and let's have a listen to the drums and bass. It's very vanilla, very bland. Right, let's put the mix boxes on. Check it out. And it's just like instant techno heaven. Um, now let's just uh, look at the one on the drums here. Uh, this one here. So let's just close the other one. What's giving it that polyrhythm, that sort of um, born slippy almost style polyrhythm? Yeah, that da 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 is this inverse reverb, which is a reverse reverb sort of thing, does back to front reverbs. Um, it's the pre delay, which is currently at 149 milliseconds. Now, at that amount of pre delay, it's doing this bounce back polyrhythm, da 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 like that. But if I adjust this up to a longer pre-delay time, I start getting a surging up, pumping compressor almost type sound from that reverse reverb surging up with the beat like that. So let me increase this up and have a listen. kind of thing right and then I can roll off the amount of it etc etc man this thing is amazing let me put it back to the polyrhythm somewhere around there right bring the bass back in. Let's bring the bass one back in and um, here we go. Ah, that is bloody great. Um, listening to the one on the bass, let's have a look at it. It's got that metallic surging up which again is the inverse uh, reverb here. And again, I can use the I can use the pre-delay and the mix amount to adjust that to give me a different uh, timing of surge, and how much of it I'm getting. Also, in this uh, particular um, uh, preset that's loaded up here and tweaked, there's this amazing. This is one of the best plugins in there. They're all really good, but this is superb. This valve tone control with five different valve models. Um, so I could use it um, on this particular valve model. There's a mid-range control. They, some of them you don't get that. So I could sort of smooth this down a bit. Add a bit more valve warmth and drive it. Like that. Let's, let's bring the drums back in now. Man, this thing is it's not just a traditional mix tool, it's a sound mangler and sound designing tool as well. 
Okay, let's uh, try the mix box on something a bit more traditional now. Um, here I've got an acoustic guitar. This is the mix box strapped over its channel. Um, I use these sound files a lot when I'm testing plugins. I've got them off the internet. It's somebody testing a high quality Martin and did some recordings of it. So uh, without the mix box, this is what it is. This is a really nice high quality acoustic guitar. Oh, lovely, lovely Woody Martin tones there. Right, let's put the old mix box on and have a listen to this. That's so lush, that's beautiful. Yeah, okay, if I was doing a mix of a very, very traditional, you know, acoustic singer-songwriter, just the guitar and the vocal, I wouldn't um, I wouldn't give it that much glisten and space and everything. But I mean, you know, it's it's, oh, it's so beautiful. This I can roll off that reverb a little bit, that inverse reverb. <laughs> Gorgeous, and part of this chain is this wonderful valve tone control. Um, so you know, I can use this to warm up the bottom end of the acoustic with some nice valve warmth. Or give it some nice valve air. Let's roll this mid and presence down. And Oh man, this thing is just super duper duper. Yeah. Okay, um, before we just check out all the features and everything, let me play you one last thing. Uh, show you mix box in action on a full mix. Okay, now Lewitt Microphones, uh, they're running a competition where you download the stems to a song, uh, which I presume is all recorded with Lewitt Mics. You do a mix, you put it up on their site, and then people vote on it, and then they choose winners, and you get free microphones. I thought it'd be interesting to try the mix box on this because if you go to the Lewitt site, there's loads of examples of other people's mixes to compare with. Uh, so let's check that out. What does it need to be free? Oh, I can see people are blinded by their anxieties. Prisoners of hate, all the slaves. Of major insecurities You will reap what you sow oh, The seeds, the seeds of your sorrow you Intoxication caused by the venom you're spitting It ain't true just because it's written And love need to appear The eternal temptation of anger and fear Could you tell me What does it need To live a life
So there's an example of Mixbox being used in a traditional mixing role. And I used instances of Mixbox on individual tracks, um, on buses, and also on auxiliary returns to set up special effects. Mixbox really is a very comprehensive and versatile tool. It will do traditional mixing role stuff, but it will also do special effects, sound mangling, and sound design type stuff. It's really versatile. Sure, here it is, and it's a API style 500 lunchbox rack with eight maximum slots. Um, you can reduce its size to just four slots like that, but other units can be scrolled across to, to access like that. Okay, um, there's an input gain and meter on this side and an output gain and meter on this side. And an off switch, which is completely seamless if you want to switch it in and out and do comparisons. Uh, down at the bottom here is where you load complete racks. And these are organized into factory preset folders of bass, delay, drums, guitar, keys, percussion spaces, uh, some of which are insert and some of which are send, synth and vocals and also I downloaded and installed the uh, signature presets which are free and they give you even more choices. And of course here you can save your own racks, you either start with a factory one, tweak it and save as, or you can initialize the rack, strip it back to nothing, uh, initialize empties the rack and then install the modules individually one by one and build something and save it as, a, as your own rack preset. Also here, I just want to draw attention to these um, infinite undo redo buttons, which are on all IK uh, plugins. Absolute godsend, an absolute lifesaver. These because you can you can be tweaking, uh, tweaking, 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 tweak, 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 on and on, da da da, and you can just infinitely undo, 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 and I'll keep undoing it. it will go back to where I was turning the rack on and off there look with the switch yeah and you can redo infinite steps so it's this can be a real lifesaver because if you get into that thing where you're just quickly trying to set up an idea and it doesn't work you can just back off just step back 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 as far as you possibly want and, and undo and go back to where you were brilliant stuff right um, so yeah you um, load rack presets here and save your own if you bring this button in, you can load presets for individual units in the slots. And of course you can save your own to build up presets for the individual units. Um, if you bring this in, we can adjust the wet dry mix for any module, which is great because it means that you can have just the most fractional sniff of something like a delay or reverb if the mix control won't get it low enough for you. And this also means of course that any unit can do parallel processing. So you can, have, you can do parallel compression, Parallel EQ, parallel distortion, whatever you like. And uh, if you've got the latest version downloaded, when you go into this uh, wet dry mix bit, you can hit this rack button and you can actually wet dry the entire rack. Brilliant stuff. Just adds more versatility. Okay, round at the back, we've got all the uh, output controls to completely gain stage things how you want. Every output of each unit can be adjusted either up or down in level to gain stage things exactly as you want as the signal moves from unit to unit. And also here we have the solo button for each unit. If you soloed something back around the front, you can see it soloed by the um, number flashing. Look, if I had to find a criticism, because I can't really find one, uh, the only thing I would say to IK Multimeter is, do we really need the solo button here? Like round the front here, we got the on-off switch for each individual rack unit there. Uh, I, don't, I don't really need a number telling me this is slot number four, so why not put the solo button here? But I mean, you know, it's only just something I can come up with if I've got to look for a criticism. Um, yeah, also around the back you'll notice, uh, no you won't because there's no compressor in there. Let's just put a compressor in. 
any type of dynamics processor, um, you can sidechain. So you activate the sidechain button and then the sidechain protocol of your door plug-in wrapper takes over. So however that works, you can choose your sidechain signal in the door plug-in wrapper and then that signal will be sidechaining or controlling the sidechain rather of the processor. One thing though, if you put two um, dynamic processors in and activate the sidechain on both, whatever you choose as the sidechain signal will be affecting the sidechain of both units. You can't have one unit receiving a sidechain from one source and another unit in the same rack receiving a sidechain from another source. If you wanted to do that, you'd have to put two racks in series, one after the other, and put a dynamics processor in each and assign different sidechain uh, trigger signals to either one. Okay. All, right, all good stuff. Yeah, anything else? Yeah, at the top, um, each unit can be turned on and off with the button there, and you can drag and reorder items to your heart's content. And then the slot above each unit is where you either empty that slot or install a fresh processor. And there are 71 different plugins that come with Mixbox. And it's a huge variety covering so many different things. Um, and amongst those plugins, you get a whole bunch of emulations of classic bits of gear, things like the Brown Knob SSL G series, you get the SSL compressor, you get the LA 2A. Um, um, where are we? Uh, compressor. And you get the 1176, you get a fair charge, you get an API, a couple of API channel strips, you get a full blown Neve 1081 channel strip. Yeah, there's, there's plenty of emulations and lots of emulations of classic filters from famous synths uh, and modulators and effects, etc. etc. Yeah, all good stuff. Um, and of course, like with all IK stuff, you can size the rack as big as you want and it doesn't degrade the graphics. Fantastic stuff. It's really a joy to work with. And the thing is, it doesn't matter whether you have it absolutely full screen covering everything because it's just the one plug in window. You know, you just go, well, close it and it's gone. You're not having to close multiple windows. Open it, just one plug-in, and everything's there to work on. It's, 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 it's really speeds up your workflow, this thing. It really does, because everything's self-contained in one unit. And if you're getting into sound design, mangling type stuff, setting up effects, you know, working on ideas, all the units are there next to each other uh, to, to easily move between them, tweaking your sound. Rearrange their order. Go around the back and quickly adjust the gains, uh, leaving each unit into the next in the chain and things like that. The wet dry mixes, etc., etc. It's just so fast to work with this thing. Okay. And one last thing I want to emphasize about this is when you go to choose presets to put on something, yeah, if you're working in a traditional mix sense and you're working with drums and you, you know, yeah, sure try a kick drum preset on a kick drum obviously or a snare drum preset on a snare but if you're going for like ideas stuff like on a drum loop or a kick drum or a bass or something don't always go for a drum or bass preset try the guitar ones try the key ones the spaces the synth the vocals etc because this thing throws up these happy accidents things you would never have thought of and it may not be that you like the entire chain that gets loaded but there's there'll be something in there that's doing something you wouldn't have thought of and you're like hang on a minute Okay, so that is doing that effect. Okay, well, I like that. I'll leave that and, and change the other bits here and there and start to sculpt something new. In that respect, this unit can really take you back to those old school hardware days when people, you know, the early really creative days of electronic dance music where people just were getting any old bits of kit that the more wealthy uh, music makers were discarding as they rushed to buy the latest and more you know, bet sample drum machines with really better samples and synths with better MIDI implementation or with, with at some actual MIDI implementation. People were just dumping all this gear and people were picking up bits and bobs and plugging something into something else and going, well, what will this do? Oh, all right, oh, yeah, that's actually cool. You know, messing with tape loops and things like this. This mix box can really get you back to those days and it constantly can throw up these, as I say, happy accidents. Um, to you which can provide all sorts of really interesting sounds you wouldn't have thought of yeah good stuff um, I think I already mentioned that in the intro that when you install this it also installs a standalone version that you can use for live work uh, but I won't go into how that works it's it's got many more features 
um, because it's got audio in out of assignments it's got MIDI in out you can build up to eight racks uh, and jump between them for different songs things like that okay. right okay well that just leaves the actual processes now I have tried six or seven times to go through this list showing them one by one and even if I only say a couple of sentences on each one it runs the video to 40 minutes so <laughs> all I'll say is there are 71 processors that come with Mixbox and at 299 euros the retail price um, that works out at I think 4.2 euros per plugin as I said at the start this has to be the best bang for buck best value plug-in collection that you can now get from any manufacturer and the quality is right up there with anything else on the market so just finally to, I'll quickly show you the processes but not by loading them into the rack one by one I'll just get the manual and quickly drill down and I won't even really say anything about them because as I said I've tried this so many times and it, it just you can't do it in less than 40 minutes uh, it makes the video last a total of 40 minutes so you can always go into the um, to their website to check out the different units in in a bit more depth so where are we where do they start come on okay so starting with amps there's this um, Fender Twin there's this Marshall JCM 900 there's this cabinet emulator bloody brilliant this especially putting drums bass and other things through synths anything uh, great stuff this flexi amp with a selectable different amp models and different cabinet models uh, this is um, a Roland Jazz Chorus uh, emulator, really good. If you want to, you can dial down all the amp stuff and just use the vibrato chorus section if you want. There's a cab size and reverb as well. Uh, that's based on a Mesa. This one is really good. It's uh, well, I will show you this in the rack. It's got different amp models you can load, and the distorted type ones have the gain control working the three mellow ones don't and this will do everything from full-blown amp distortion to the most subtle addition of um, and I mean really subtle uh, harmonic type saturation just to sort of bring out a vocal or something like that really good stuff uh, then there's an SBT Ampeg uh, this tone control I'm absolutely in love with it fantastic five different valve models drive it as hard as you want you can use it for everything from adding valve air to valve warmth at the bottom end, all sorts of stuff. Great, brilliant. Okay, next channel strips. Uh, there's this channel strip, which is not emulating anything. It's got a, a very clean center section with a sweep mid that goes from about 200 to 14K and a low and high shelf, but it also has a valve emulated switchable sub and air band and a compressor. Very nice. Then you get the full blown uh, Neve 1081 emulation, including the preamp. Really good. It'll, it's as good as any of the other, other emulations out there. Uh, then you get this EQ comp. It's not modeled on anything, but it's a really tidy little um, equalizer with a compressor and a gain, a little channel strip. And uh, if you update to the latest version, you get the uh, classic API 550. Three band switching EQ. You can kind of think of it as the American Neve with a different character and you can switch in the preamp emulation if you want the band pass is there EQ in out and the uh, high and low band can be switched from peak to shelf oh and the space reverse great stuff I mean having this and the 1081 just gives you everything you need really good but there, there is more channel strips but there's the full SSL brown knob G series but it's divided into two sections because it, you can't fit the whole channel on one panel. Okay, next delay units. There's this digital delay, which is really nice, a very AMS-like sort of visually, but it's it gets you into that sort of bar, ballpark of high-end digital delays. And the mode button's nice: left, centre, right, left, right, doublet or mono. There's also a filter for it. This is a reverb delay, really nice. So uh, this is an Echoplex emulation, I think. Really good tape echo, fantastic. Okay, next distortion. There's a bit crusher with bit. You can adjust the bits and the res, and it's got a cutoff and all the rest of it. Really nice. This distortion models different types of amp distortions. There's a rectifier mode, etc. Um, this lo-fi does what it says on the tin. 
I really love this one with the little space invader thing. Uh, this is um, an emulation of, as it says here, one of the best overdrive stomp boxes, analog, but I, I can't think which one it is. And the Tube Screamer, okay? Now next, um, Dynamics. You get the 1176, you get the SSL G series Dynamics section, so there is actually a gate in the collection here. You can use this just as the gate and it can be side chained and you can just not use the compressor by dialing down the threshold. And if you're using either the gate or the compressor or both together, it can be side chained. Um, you get the SSL bus compressor from the G series. Um, this is a tube based compressor. Uh, it's modeled on a classic tube compressor, not sure which one, but very nice indeed for more mellow tube type compression. The DSA is one of my favorite DSAs I've ever used. It's always on the money, it always does what I want it to do. You can adjust the range, upper and lower frequency um, to define a range, how much DSing, the release time, soft or normal DSing. The slope can be switched between very steep 48 dB octave to a very mild 6 dB octave. That's the slope at each end of the frequency range. And there's a listen mode, and it can be side chained if you want. Now this limiter is a T-Rex own design. Um, it's a it's a it's a what do you call it? Um, a multiband limiter. There are three separate hard knee compressors in this. I'm not sure to split at what frequencies, but with only one set of controls, this can get very extreme uh, pumping type stuff if you want. But it can also be mellow. Uh, and then you get the Fairchild emulation. One of the most famous compressors ever made. If you don't know the Fairchild, um, it just does this thing. You know, it's not really like something to put on to do pumping type compression, but it does this thing. If we were to talk about audio in the 3D modeling blender type world, you put the Fairchild on a bus or a track or an output, and it just extrudes the audio, if you understand 3D modeling. It, it pulls it out a little bit, just makes everything just step forward. Just brilliant. That's why it's so famous, and it's used on. It's been used on so many hit record mixes over the years, and you get the LA two A. So you're getting plenty of classics, and trust me, the IK multimedia emulations, they'll, you know, they're as good as anything out there. Um, okay, next EQs. Well, there's the G series Brown Knob EQ that accompanies the G series dynamics section so you are actually getting another channel strip but split into two bits and just to show you on the rack the advantage of it being that way is that you can have the dynamics section and the Q section and you can decide whether the dynamics are post or pre EQ just like on the real board so you know you get all that okay next where are we so you got the SSL uh, this is the 650 uh, API 10 band octave graphic. Incredibly powerful tool. Don't ever underestimate the humble 10 band octave graphic. This will allow you to do instant, I mean, really quick, massively drastic EQ moves, or it can do subtle stuff. Yeah, it's got the gain, to, they've emulated the gain a bit there, so you can give it some gain. It's got proportional Q, this, if I remember rightly. The more you cut or boost, the peakier it gets. This is a really useful plugin. I use the standalone T Rex version of this all the time. R really good. Okay, next there's this parametric EQ. It's a simple two band EQ, but each band goes from 20 hertz to 20k, and each band has a Q. So you can use it for very, very subtle EQing purposes, or you can ram up the Q and it will start to resonate. I mean, not like massive amounts of resonance, but it will honk or squeak, uh, and you can sort of get a bit more radical. And you get the Pultec EQP1A emulation, one of the most famous EQs ever made. Okay, it's a, it's a lunchbox panel, so there's not room for the bandwidth control for the treble boost. And I don't know if they fixed the treble boost uh, bandwidth at wide, narrow, or somewhere in the middle, but it, it, it's a great little EQ. You just have to learn how to use it. It's a bit quirky. One of the most famous EQs ever made. And this emulation, like all their other emulations of famous bits of gear, they will stand up against the competition, don't worry about that. Okay, next, the filters, there's a huge amount of them, and a lot of them are taken from IK Multimedia's synthesizer emulations, because I don't know if you know, they do a whole suite of emulations of classic synths. This one looks very Moog-like, it's an envelope filter, there's a format filter, there's this filter phaser, uh, which apparently is modelled on a famous classic phaser shifter stomp box rack unit. Uh, this is based on the SEM, 
filter chip in the Profit 5 and uh, OBXA, hence it looks quite sequential looking, the writing. Uh, this is taken from a couple of Moog synths. It's a Moog transistor ladder emulation. This is from the Oppheim Sem. Um, and this is from the Juno 60 and Jupiter 8, based on that Roland filter chip. And this is a multi, uh, no, this is the LFO filter. Again, it looks very Moog like, but they don't say it's from that. Um, and this is a multi filter, different types of bands, uh, filters, bands, and it can be used simultaneously. And then finally, this is, a, I think, a color sound wire. Um, now, obviously, as soon as you load up that color sound wire, I think it's a color sound, the first thing you think is, well, I want to automate that pedal position. Don't worry about that. Every parameter of every plugin can be automated. There are, I think, 20 automation slots for each plugin, but th I don't think there are any plugins that get close to using those 20 um, parameters. Uh, so there you'll find the spares, and there you can automate turning individual units on off, turning the whole rack on off, etc. So automation, not a problem um, for automating stuff in your mix. Okay, next modulators, and again, a lot of these are taken from the synthesizer emulations. There's an AM modulator. Um, this from MIDI should allow you to affect the carrier frequency from MIDI notes, but it doesn't work when um, Mixbox is running as a plugin. Whether they'll update that, I don't know. There doesn't seem to be any way to route the MIDI to that. Um, but I think it works on the rack version because the rack version allows you to select your audio in and outs, and it allows you to select your MIDI source and all the rest of it. But even without that ability to um, control the carry frequency from MIDI notes, this still can do really good stuff, radically alter the sound of things. Okay, auto panner, uh, chorus, uh, classic stereo chorus. This is a chorus based on the Boss CE1. It's a bucket brigade, uh, analog chorus vibrato unit. Really nice, that one. There's an electric mistress flanger. This ensemble is a combo of um, 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 like chorus and what else? Ensemble type effect taken from different synths. Roland Staff, the Selene of the Arp. Really nice, this one. Really, really nice. Um, there's a envelope flanger. There's this flanger, which I've not tried yet, but apparently it does very deep flanging. Um, then there's the FM modulator. It's like the AM modulator, and it can, again, radically, radically change the sound of, of a synth or bass or whatever. Again, the same thing as with the FM one, though. The, the assigning of MIDI so that MIDI notes coming in can um, can be what chooses the carrier frequency. Um, it it doesn't work in the plug-in version. Again, whether they'll update that, I don't know. But it, it's still, without that, it, it still can do great stuff. Okay, next, there's this multi-course, which according to the manual says, it has a random pitching characteristic, which makes it less regular and noticeable than a classic chorus. And then this Opto Tremolo is based on a Fender. And this phaser, it says, recreates the sound of one of the best known classics of the past. What that would be, I don't know. And then there's the rotary based on the Leslie 147. Uh, if you haven't tried the IK Multimedia Leslie stuff, um, there's a lot of Leslie's in Amplitude 5 and they're really great. And again, try this on things you might not think to use it on. Okay, the slicer next. I will show you that in the rack. Um, the slicer is a really interesting one. Um, because there are 50 different patterns which you select with the pattern control and you see a graphic representation of each pattern. A depth and an envelope and then you can sync to your door and have the pattern run at different speeds. Now this will do the, ob the obvious stuff like it will apply a rhythmic slicer pattern to a pad but also you can use it to um, like post a reverb in, in a reverb chain to add a rhythmic pattern breaking up and slicing up a reverb decay, uh, which then you can auto pan or whatever you like, flange, and, and you can get some really wacky effects with this when you start working it with other things. So there's that, there's a small stone phaser, a tremolo, a uni, I thought it was a uni vibe, a Fender Opto tremolo, vintage unit emulated. And then finally the reverbs, which I'll show you here. Um, what IK Multimedia do with reverb is rather than giving you a reverb that is like a sort of master of, um, sorry, jack of all trades, master of none, 
you know, well, here's your reverb. It will do all these different types of reverb. What I came out to me to do is they just dedicate one reverb plugin to doing only one type of reverb, but doing it really well. So there's an ambience reverb. There's a digital reverb. There's a hall. There's an inverse, which does back to front stuff. There's a plate. Brilliant, the plate. Really good. They're all really good, but I particularly like the plate. This only does rooms. There's a spring. Nice it is too. And whoopee, and the stereo imager, which is in with the reverbs. This will actually go up to 200% width, but you have to be very careful about mono compatibility. Uh, all that. Okay, now there's one other reverb that I'm saving to the last, this convolution room. It's the only other plugin with the front panel loader. Here you choose the impulse response recording. And as you can clearly see, there's everything from really small ambient spaces to big stuff. Adjust the time, high pass, low pass, stereo width, and a mix control. Really, really realistic, this one. And a good complement to all the others. And these are all really good, trust me. Right, and that's your reverbs. And finally, well, let's stick with the rack for this, the saturators. There's a phonograph that does modern or old vinyl sound. Uh, the saturator, this is from the T-Rex range. It is great. It's a really good saturator with different modes. And you can use it to you know, either get ball-busting saturation or just to add a taste to get something like a driven Tamla Motown style vocal or something. Really nice, different modes, etc. And then finally, the tape cassette, which appeared in, as far as I know, in Amplitude 5. And it really, I love it because you see the tape going around all the time. It does what it says on the tin. It gives you the sound of a, of a cassette tape as knackered and busted up as you want or supple because you've got a flutter, wow, tape, snap, saturation, erosion, and different noise. That's it. There's all your plugins. And um, it really is a fantastically diverse, yeah, I managed to work that word in, collection of plugins. So there you go. The mix box. In summary, if you can tell me a collection of plugins of this quality um, at that give better bang for buck, 70 plugins for 299 euros. So if you, if you know a better value package, tell me, because I can't think of one. I think this is the best value package of plugins available anywhere now. It's incredibly versatile. It will do traditional mix work. You've got plenty of emulated classics in there, and it will do all your sound sculpting and mangling type stuff. It works for doing traditional mix work. It, it works for doing effects. It works for doing buses, outputs, whatever you like. Okay, all that. Um, it's light on the CPU as far as I can see. Okay. Um, it doesn't seem to be CPU hungry at all. Um, yeah. And finally, one of the reasons I like IK Multimedia stuff so much is not just the quality, but they make the whole business of authorizing and managing your software so easy because they don't rely on iLock and stuff like that. They've designed their own authorization and software management tool, which is uh, in the form of a little pop-up internet connected window, basically. And it's so simple. So my advice is get the demo, try this out. Because one of the great things about IK products is they give you real proper demos. Just download it, install it, and when you run it for the first time, the authorizer will pop up saying, this isn't authorized, do you want to try the demo? And you say yes, and then you've got nine days. And once you've said yes on that little applet, you just minimize it, don't close it, minimize it, and then it will work with no bursts of white noise, no interruptions, nothing. And that thing pops up whenever you install and open a new mix box. Otherwise, you're completely free to really delve into this and try it really properly to your heart's content. And I'm telling you, man, I think once you try it, you'll just get your money out. This is such good value for 299 and it sounds bloody great. It really does. So there you go, mix box. Just have a slurp of my beer. Oh, lovely. Going for a bit of Heineken today. Okay, so there it is. Um, please subscribe to the channel um, leave your comments below whether you like this thing or think it's crap or you already own it let people know what your experience is um, but I think it is one of the most important products IK Multimedia have released 
in recent years, even with the fantastic Modo drum and Modo bass. This is an absolute winner. Mega bang for buck, really good quality, incredible versatility. It speeds up your workflow. It's just bloody great. I, I'm in love with it. And there, ladies and gentlemen, you have it. IK Multimedia Mixbox. And I'll see you for more videos soon.